Today's lesson is going to explain the first part of photosynthesis called the light reaction, sometimes referred to as the light-dependent reaction, and you'll see why in the, the lesson today. This lesson is going to be written on this board, and I do have to walk a few steps away from the actual microphone, so I'll try and, and speak loudly, but it will probably echo a little bit more than usual. Alright, so here we have what is drawn on this screen is the, a membrane. You can identify it because of this structure. I didn't complete because it just overwhelms the picture of this, but over here on the left-hand side where I'm not going to draw very much, these are the phospholipids, and this is very indicative of a membrane. So what membrane are we actually in? We're inside of the chloroplast, which is inside of a plant cell. And within the chloroplast, um, there are these tiny structures called thylakoids. And what you see in front of you is the membrane of the thylakoid. This whole structure, thylakoid membrane. Below this membrane is what is referred to as the thylakoid space. Above this membrane is the stroma, which is found inside of the chloroplast. So think of it. The space between the thylakoid membrane and the membrane of the chloroplast is a liquid, and that is called the stroma. So the first thing that happens in the light reaction of this process is we start with photons. So I'm going to draw a little sun. There's my sun. The sun releases photons of light. Remember that they are packages of energy. They travel in wavelengths. So there's my photon. And a photon of light is going to strike a chlorophyll molecule. And that chlorophyll molecule, <coughs> excuse me, when that chlorophyll molecule absorbs that photon of light, it gets the energy, it kind of transitions it immediately from light energy into chemical energy. And that energy goes within the electrons of this molecule. And when electrons gain energy, they rise or jump to a higher energy level. They sometimes refer to as being excited. So this arrow that I just drew upward signifies that an electron from within this chlorophyll molecule, that is the green box, that chlorophyll molecule got excited. Now each of these small green boxes represents a different chlorophyll molecule. Together they are collectively called sorry, a photosystem. So a photosystem is a collection of chlorophyll molecules within the thylakoid membrane. So these chlorophyll molecules, you can kind of see I drew six of them, are clustered together. Because there's two photosystems, you can see the one that I just drew on, there's one all the way over here, this little marker, that? that's another photosystem. So we're going to differentiate them by numbering them. I know it sounds peculiar, but this is actually photosystem two. So if I kind of go backwards and say that what just happened here is that photon of light struck a chlorophyll molecule within photosystem two, an electron from within that chlorophyll got excited. It does not stay in an excited state for long. An excited state basically means an electron has gone from its typical energy level around the nucleus to a higher or further out energy level. The closer you are to an, the nucleus of an atom, the less energy required. So if you absorb some extra energy, it's like they're, they're saying, I can go further away because I have extra energy. So this arrow signifies that it goes up into a higher energy level. It does not stay there for very long. What will happen is I'm going to draw an arrow downward because that means that the electron has come back down to what is known as ground state. So I'm not drawing, I'm not writing all this information down, so hopefully you can press pause and rewind it if you don't hear it correctly or you need some time to write stuff down. But the arrow going up signifies it's excited. The arrow coming back down says that that electron will drop back down to ground state. So what happened to that energy? The energy that is the difference between up here and down here is passed. The electron doesn't get passed, but that orange line signifies that the energy got passed. So what will happen at this electron, or this chlorophyll? An electron will get excited. An electron will drop back down to ground state, and the energy will then pass from chlorophyll, and I'm not gonna keep drawing the arrows, but basically, the energy is going to get passed from chlorophyll to chlorophyll until it reaches the final, the final chlorophyll. And that is given a specific name, so I'm going to write that down. 
This little chlorophyll molecule is called the reaction center because something different happens at this chlorophyll molecule. This chlorophyll molecule gets excited, but the electron is actually released from this chlorophyll molecule. It does not drop back down to ground state. So where does it go? There is a molecule that I'm going to draw right here that is ready to take that electron. So now I'm going to draw that actual electron. Like I'll put a dot there. So that's the electron. That electron just was um, picked up from this last chlorophyll molecule called the reaction center. So this electron is now going to transfer to this molecule. This molecule is given a name called the primary electron acceptor. So named because it takes electrons and it accepts them. So hopefully that makes sense as to why it would be called that. Um, so the primary electron acceptor now accepts this electron. So now I'm going to draw it there. I'll erase it from... Okay. Ooh, that was a large eraser mark, sorry. So now this primary electron acceptor has an electron. And we're going to kind of have to stop for that, that process um, right there because we have to talk about something else now. Because the next time another photon comes in and strikes that chlorophyll molecule, another electron is eventually going to be spit out of this reaction center. We just can't keep losing electrons. So we have to talk about how do we replenish those electrons that are lost. There is a special enzyme, and it's somewhat generically drawn. At the base of this photosystem, there is an enzyme. I'm not giving it any particular name. I don't want to overwhelm you. Um, there is an enzyme there. And what it does is it has an active site for water, H2O. Now what will happen is um, it basically has to take two waters at a time because of chemical uh, to balance that out, and I'll show you in a few seconds why. But what will happen is this enzyme is going to break down or catalyze two water molecules. And what it breaks it down into, I'm going to have two arrows because there's technically two things that come out. O2 that's why we need two of them to start with, because we're going to end with O2. If I only put one water in there, I would not get out what I technically need. So I get um, oxygen out, as well as four hydrogen ions. So that's an H, sorry. Okay. So four hydrogen ions. Notice how it has a positive charge. Each hydrogen has one proton and one electron. So if it has a positive charge, it means it lost its electron. So I have four hydrogens that each lost an electron. Guess where that electron went? The void that happened up here in the reaction center replaces electrons because it breaks down water. So water replenishes so that the reaction center doesn't run out of electrons. Because if the, as I showed you, if light continues to be absorbed, more and more electrons are going to be exiting this reaction center. So we need to replenish them, and this is how we replenish them, by the enzyme that is attached to photosystem 2 by breaking down water. All right. So we've had to take a little break in the whole system to kind of talk about that. So we kind of jump back down into, let's talk again about this electron, this high energy electron just was spit out of this reaction center. So what's going to happen is this primary electron acceptor is going to travel. So this line signifies that it's movement. I can't do it with the program. So what will happen is that line signified that it moved, and so now we can kind of draw it down here. Stuff happened in its process that i got to talk about. So there it is. So what will happen, this primary electron acceptor, as it moves, as you can see, it's kind of moving a second time, is carrying a high energy electron. What it just passed right here is something referred to as a proton pump. Or sometimes it's referred to as the hydrogen pump. You can kind of use either one of them, a proton pump or a hydrogen pump. Because what it does is it pumps. And if you remember from last chapter, a pump is a form of a protein. So this is a protein that 
actually is going to work actively. So it does active transport to pump hydrogen ions. If you go back down here, this hydrogen ion, recall, is just really a proton because it had one proton, one electron. It lost the electron. So really it's just a proton, hence the name proton pump. So what will happen is the um, pump is going to actively move hydrogen ions. So I'm going to draw some hydrogen ions. They're on both sides of the membrane. But they're not in equal concentration. They're actually low concentration in the stroma, high concentration in the thylakoid space. So what will happen, if we want to move this hydrogen ion through the membrane, remember, because it has a charge, it requires to go through an actual membrane, and it's going from low to high. So from low to high, this movement right here would require energy. Notice we did it without the use of ATP. Last time we worked with a pump, we needed ATP. This time, where does the energy come from but this electron? Recall this is a high energy electron. It was jumped, it was, it was removed from the chlorophyll molecule, it jumped out of its electron shell because it was high energy. So as this primary electron acceptor bypasses the hydrogen pump, basically the hydrogen pump sees its opportunity, it says, oh, there's energy, and so it uses that electron's energy to pump a hydrogen across the membrane. And so it goes from the low concentration stromocide to the high concentration thylakoid space side. So after it passes it, even though this is physically the same electron, it's not as high powered any longer. Some of its juice got sucked out of it as it bypassed the hydrogen pump going through. This whole journey is also given a name. There's a lot of new terminology. I can't really help that. It's called the electron transport chain. All right. So this line signifies the electron transport chain. It's the movement of the primary electron acceptor from right outside photosystem 2 through the hydrogen pump to the base of the next photosystem called photosystem 1. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop there for this lesson because there was a lot that happened there. Um, we're going to cut this into a few different videos to kind of get your, your bearings. But if I want to do something very, very quickly to uh, recap what just happened here. So sunlight releases a photon, strikes a chlorophyll molecule within photosystem 2. That chlorophyll molecule's electron gets excited and rises to a higher energy level. It will drop back down, the electron will drop back down, but its energy is passed to the next chlorophyll molecule. The next chlorophyll molecule's electron is excited. That electron will drop back down to ground state. Its energy will then go and continue passing through each of the chlorophyll molecules until it reaches the reaction center. The reaction center's electron will exit and attach itself to an awaiting molecule called the primary electron acceptor. The primary electron acceptor is going to travel along the electron transport chain. As it bypasses the hydrogen pump, the electron that was placed on the electron acceptor will supply the energy required to pump a hydrogen from low concentration stroma to the high concentration side of the thylakoid space. The primary electron acceptor will still continue on, and what will happen is it will wait until the next video and I'll show you what happens to it. But in the meantime, to replenish the lost electron all the way back here, an enzyme at the base of photosystem 2 catalyzes or breaks down two water molecules into oxygen and into four hydrogen ions. And the hydrogen ions are ions because they lost electrons. The electrons are then drawn into the reaction center so they can replace all of the electrons being lost to the primary electron acceptor. The oxygen that was produced here is going to be released from the plant. How they get out is a, is a structure called the stomates. And that's where we'll stop.